Welcome to another episode of Zero to 60. On today's episode, I'm forcing another 460 Warbro into my stock bucketed fuel system. Now, if you hadn't seen the progress of this build, the current fuel setup that I've got for the low pressure system is based off one Chinese Warbro 460. Now, this is the part, the part number I ordered is the low pressure version of the Warbro and it's been fine. Now, I did do something a bit weird. I've actually already taken this out of the car as you can probably work out. But when I installed this, I sort of went against the grain from what most DIY low pressure fuel pumps are. And I didn't use the Venturi system. And I have actually removed the cable tie, so this should all pull out. Nope, don't want to damage that wiring. Shall just disconnect that. So that's my... Chinese pump that's done best part of 5,000 kilometers and it's been pretty damn good. Okay, so you can see in there, when I installed this, I, hopefully that camera's picking up, I removed the Venturi housing, but I never actually reconnected anything to it. And I've just allowed the fuel to flow in the bottom through this one-way valve. And I, I don't know the exact science behind it, but it seems to let fuel in fast enough but it doesn't let it drain out. So essentially I've still had a bucketed system without the need for the Venturi. And as this pump is not powering the Venturi, it's only sending fuel to the regulator, I haven't had any issues with overdriving or using too much power, throwing any error codes. It's actually worked flawlessly. So I'm curious how this is gonna go because I am now switching to a bucketless fuel system. So yeah, these here, they're rated to around, the genuine ones are rated to around 600 horsepower and I do intend on going past that, which is why I've purchased another one. This one that's been in the car now for quite a few months has been absolutely flawless. On a full pull running E60, I wanna say full pull, top of fourth gear from a standstill, my fuel pressure will only drop to 61 or 62 PSI, so that is pretty good. I'm staying out of the 50s. It's really worked absolutely perfectly, and for the sake of 30 Aussie bucks, it's been surprisingly good. The only thing I did do, and if you haven't seen that video, I did actually, the car did actually break down once, and it was because the rubber hose that the company supplied with this Chinese pump, it was definitely not E85 compatible, and it, it just exploded. Uh, I switched over to the BMP fittings, which I'd planned to do when I went to the stage three setup, and yeah, she's been fine ever since. I think I did that first or second week of January, and that's been in there all fine. Now in this episode, video, whatever you want to call it. I've got to try and squeeze these two into the same system, the same bucket. The issue I'm going to have, I think, because my current system doesn't use the Venturi, um, yeah, I don't think this way is going to work well enough for a full fuel system with two of these pumps cranking. So I'm going to have to switch to a bucket list. And the way you do that, you basically just cut some sections out of the bottom. What you're going to see me do next, I'm going to go and work out exactly how I'm going to make it all fit. And I'll give you guys an update with, with the plan in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. And that, uh, that took about an hour. Uh, what I've ended up doing, I've opened up the bottom of the bucket. And that is to allow the main, well, the primary fuel pumps filter to stick out. Um, yeah, but aside from that, it was basically just opening up the bucket so that we now have full flow. That will always just be getting fuel in or whatever's in the tank. And I've also modified this top bracket here. So it's now time to assemble it. Okay, so first things I'm gonna do first, the BMP fitting that's not currently fitted to the secondary pump. We shall pop that on. These BMP fittings are amazing, worth their weight in gold in my opinion. If you saw the breakdown video, it was, I'd, I'd made like a, I don't know what you call it, but I'd, I'd basically made that with three different fittings. And it was just a bit rubbish where these BMP fittings, they just slide over the end like that. There's an O-ring inside there and you just thread them on. Like that. Once it clamps on tight, that basically forces the O-ring over the outlet and we're good to go. So with these pumps, I'm gonna use the original pump as the primary pump, mainly because I, I really wanna work it and see how long these Chinese ones last. Uh, that has been, as I said earlier, been in the car for 
quite some time running on heavy E85 mixtures and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. So I've got the first pump going in on the front side of the bucket. Second pump is going to go down the back and which way do I want to do it? I want to do it that way so that the... No, sorry, I want to do it that way. I'm putting it in... Oh, you better see from the camera up there. Putting it in that way so we've got more of the filter coming up and beside this one. And it's also to do with positioning of the outlet against the black top piece. Uh, what can I use? Just try and feed that. Now, cool. Now I'm just gonna pull that filter out a little bit. Now the reason I didn't cut a big hole on this side, I didn't want the filter to come out and ever interfere with the fuel sender. Cannot talk today, I do apologize. So they actually go in there quite tight. And this is now my cut down frame, which I'm still gonna to use to guide the return from the regulator back into the bucket. So that does actually all sit quite nicely and still adds a bit of strength and stability to the bucket. Like that. And what the hell? That one go like that. I think we'll probably probably spin that one right round and have them both coming out that side. So these two fittings will come on like that. I won't clamp them on just yet. I'm just checking clearance on everything and it all looks pretty good. So from that point, it's just a matter of, everything's gonna work. It's just a matter of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just cable tie it all in place. So. Okay, so hopefully you've seen a time lapse of me assembling this. It is a bit of a mess of cable ties, and I do just wanna say, if you've got the money, I think just go out and buy the, the bracket that supports these pumps from the bucket list kits that you can get. But if you're on a budget and you're trying to save every cent that you can, like me, um, this should essentially work. We have opened up the bottom of the bucket, so fuel is now gonna flow through or flow into these filters absolutely freely. Um, yeah, but aside from that, everything is just cable tied in place and it is very, very tight, very strong. Nothing's going anywhere. If you're gonna do this yourself and use the original bucket, you can save a few dollars and make up fuel adapter fittings into the Y piece like this. Um, I actually did that with my first pump and don't recommend it at all. Just spend the money. This come from BMP, um, worth every cent in my opinion. I think this Y piece was around 20 or 25 US and each fitting is 20 or 25 US as well. So we've got a fair few dollars in fittings there but it just makes it so much easier. And when I'm not so broke, I will buy a proper bracket and these this will all then go into the proper aluminium bracket instead of my haggard uh, bucket, which this is the bucket that I used for the first um, stage two upgrade and it has now got a few extra holes in it that are no longer being used, but it's gonna do the job. Uh, all that's left to do is refit the fuel sender and original main power into the top hat, which clips in there, and the fuel sender is gonna clip into this one. Now, I haven't mentioned it previously, but the second pump does require its own power. And we do that by just drilling into the top hat with two bolts, essentially, which come through. They're clamped onto the power there. I've just marked positive and negative. So, yeah. 
I've got to get the signal wire from the BMS port injection controller. That's going to tell this second pump when to trigger and I'll run a relay from the battery in the boot. I'll show the wiring side of it in the port injection video because really that's what's controlling this. But yeah, that is how I DIY made a stage three fuel pump as cheap as I could. If you've got any questions about doing this yourself, um, please hit us up in the comments below. Like I said, I did my stage two fuel pump a bit differently to other people not using the Venturi and on my car it has been flawless with decent long pulls, the bucket didn't run out. And the reason I wanted to switch to a bucket list was I was concerned about the volume being left in this bucket when it's sealed. Uh, now it's got two pumps and there's a good chunk of the actual fuel capacity of this bucket would be gone. So yeah, that's why I've gone to a bucket list setup and she's all ready to go back in the car, which I'm gonna go and do now and hopefully finish my bloody port injection system off. Thank you very much for watching. We will catch you on the next and one. And just a quick update. I'm just gonna fit the pump and I had the secondary pump sort of clamped over to this side, which it was just, it was more solid to, to clamp it to. Uh, however, when you try and force the hat down on, there wasn't actually enough clearance for this little arm piece here. So I have now, it's starting to look a bit too dodgy, but it sort of works. It's still very solid, nothing's gonna move. Um, so I have to basically just center the two pumps. Something I didn't mention in that video that I was recording inside the office, with the filters coming through down the bottom, they actually lock the pumps in. So they are just supporting them at the top and with the poke through at the bottom, they're all very tight. They ain't gonna go anywhere. Anyway, now I've got that clearance, this will sit down properly and I'll get it back in the car. Thanks guys.